Hello and welcome to another episode of Walking Movies. I am Nick and I am walking to the cinema. I've still got a little bit of a scarf on. It's, uh, it's the middle of March, it is warming up, but the weather's been a bit temperamental today, so I've got a little snooty thing around my neck. And uh, you join me as I walk in. I'm walking to the cinema to go and see a new th film called Drive Away Dolls. Now, the problem when doing a movie review about a film like Drive Away Dolls is that it's been out for about three weeks already <laughs> everywhere else in the world. So it means that when I upload this video, other than the people that subscribe to the channel, no one will probably watch this review <laughs> because there's already lots of people talking about this film. I imagine, I haven't checked YouTube, but if a film's been out for that long, you know, it's what you expect. So, I'm doing this knowing full well that it's not going to be a popular video. But, you know what? I'm walking to the movies, I want to tell you about my experience, and that's what I'm going to do. So, Drive Away Dolls. It is a film directed by Ethan Cummins. It stars Joanne Qualley and Geraldine Fismanathan. I think I've got that correct. I was trying to memorise it before I started recording because uh, I wasn't familiar with either actress. But uh, I think that's how you pronounce the name. I just got other people as well like uh, Beanie Feldstead, Bill Camp, uh, Pedro Pascal, and of course everyone's favourite, Matt Damon. So I saw a trailer for this film uh, a few weeks ago now when I went to see uh, Pretty Little Lies? No, it wasn't called Pretty Little Lies, was it? Whatever that film was. Um, Wicked Little Lies. I think that was the title of the film. Um, so yeah, I saw a trailer for it then. Thought, hey, this looks fun. And why is it not out? And now it's finally out. So I'm going to see it. It runs for a cool 84 minutes. Just to let you know, guys, that's under 90 minutes. That's less than one and a half hours. This is unusual for a film and I'm delighted by that <laughs> because uh, you know the last film I saw was almost three hours long you know I've not been back to cinema since June came out and it's interesting timing because this film's coming out now but next week 22nd of March I believe is the release of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire officially kicking off the summer blockbuster season in March uh, last year I think it was Dungeons and Dragons which did not fare well, which was very disappointing. But yeah, Ghostbusters. I, I'm i intrigued by the release date for Ghostbusters because the last one came out around Thanksgiving. This one comes out before Easter. It's a strange time, I think, to release a film of that magnitude. But that's what Sony are doing. Um, and I'll be going to see it next week. So you'll hear my thoughts about that in a future episode. But um, yeah, I don't know too much about this film. I said I saw a trailer, it looked quite fun, and uh, you know, hopefully it will be. I'm seeing it on a Sunday afternoon. Always a good time to see a film like this, and uh, that's about all I've got to say. So, you know, I'll be back in a little bit with my thoughts on Drive Away Dolls. Is it worth 90 minutes of your time? Let's find out. Oh, it's me again. Yes, I'm running an ad during my own YouTube video. Um, just to let you know that I've started to do more content on the channel. So if you're just watching Walking Movies, have a look around the YouTube channel. There is more stuff going on, including Nick tries things where I try things and it's proven quite popular. So, you know, I do more than just talk about movies. Have a look and please, whatever you do, subscribe to the channel. Thank you. So, in the last few years, we've had some really good LGBTQ plus films like Bros and even better than that, Bottoms. 
um, and Drive Away Dolls also fits into that category but is nowhere near as entertaining as either of those two films it's a real shame I I think that this this will definitely have an audience it, it will definitely be beloved by some people but it just did not work for me it's a I mean obviously it's it's directed by Ethan Curran one of the Curran brothers and you can kind of you can kind of tell that it, it's got some of those familiar traits that you get with Coen Brothers films. It's a road trip crime comedy, I guess. The problem is, it's just not funny. It's not funny at all. I didn't laugh out loud once. Um, the cast are, are good. I mentioned Pedro Pascal. He's in it for a hot minute. Pretty similar with Matt Damon. They're not in it you know, particularly long. Their characters are much smaller parts of the overall story. Got no problem with that. I've got no problem with that at all. That's just information for you, I guess. Um, but it's a it's a road trip crime comedy without the jokes. Just didn't find it very funny. No, and the thing is, it wasn't just me. Like, I think I heard a few people laugh once during the whole film. And for a film that, you know, I was talking about the fact that it's, it's 86 minutes. Wow. Uh, you don't get many films like that. I've never known a film under 90 minutes drag so much as this, which is really, really bizarre. I think one of the things that I really didn't like about the film as well is. There is all of these weird sequences which I guess were supposed to represent like an acid trip or something. Like all the colours were all kind of like weird and you had swirly images and a little bit like the beginning to tell the unexpected with a dancing woman. Um, these popped up every now and again for no real reason at all. They didn't play into the story. They were just like kind of interludes to get you to the next bit but there was no real rhyme or reason as to why they were and it felt very much like somebody who had just left film school or something and was trying to show how impressive they were how skillful they were for what purpose it just just seemed really weird <laughs> like a really weird choice and the editing itself i didn't like it had a lot of kind of weird switches um, like the screen would revolve or the screen would kind of like pop down as if this, somebody was going through like the different options you get on uh, iMovie or something like really really weird um, and so I can see why some people might like this film but it just did not gel with me at all. Um, it didn't help but that one of the lead characters just wasn't a particularly likeable character. And there's often this argument when it comes to films and TV about... I've heard this before, like, people said that it was really hard for them to enjoy Breaking Bad or The Sopranos because the lead character um, in those the characters in those shows were not nice people but I think you can enjoy something where the main character maybe isn't um, isn't a particularly good person or doesn't have good morals or anything like that if there's a reason to kind of root for them I just didn't feel like this film had that at all I, I'm disappointed I'm surprised that how disappointed I've been in the film actually and it'd be interesting to now go and see it'd probably be like the beekeeper I'll go and see a load of reviews after people are like hey this film's great I'm just like okay so the thing is I can understand why 
people might like it it just clearly wasn't for me and the thing is I also mentioned film like bros and bottoms because I'm a straight white male these films clearly <laughs> I'm not the intended audience for right you know I can't relate to some of the issues or some of the experiences that the characters have in these films that said I can still enjoy those films and have enjoyed those films so it's a tough one I'm gonna score it I'm gonna score it five out of ten you know it wasn't awful I'm glad I've seen it I've not really got the urge to go and watch it again if I if I find out why <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong to feel this way about the film. Um, you know, I might revisit it at some point, but I can't really recommend it. That's 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 really where it kind of comes down to, and that's just my opinion. And that's one thing I'll always say as well, right? I don't think anyone watches my reviews and goes, "Oh well." Nick hated this film, so I'm not going to go and see it. Or Nick really liked this film, so I wasn't going to see it, but now I'm going to go and see it. Like, I don't think anyone should use reviews as a complete decision-making tool. But, you know, I do think listening to what people have got to say about films, you know, is interesting. Otherwise, I wouldn't do this. But this just didn't work for me and I'm, I'm disappointed that I've come away feeling like that so there you go would I recommend you see this at the cinema? nah um, I saw it weirdly on quite a big screen I it was on in a a screen that I don't normally I don't normally sh I do obviously show films in but what I mean is is that I don't go in that particular screen very often and it was actually quite a, a large screen for a small room um, and I don't think anything was gained or lost by seeing it on the big screen I think you could watch this at home and enjoy it or not enjoy it um, so yeah 5 out of 10 it was fine but it wasn't as good as I hoped it would be and I know I know my friends in Australia saw this a few weeks ago and did enjoy it so I'm going to be interested to listen to their review and find out what they liked about the film that I didn't so there we go so that's it for this review um, as for the next film I expect to go and see is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire uh, then a few days after that Kong X Godzilla comes out which is weird like so they're, they're, they're kind of all these films are coming out really quickly and then a few days after that Kung Fu Panda 4 comes out which has already come out uh, in some markets out in the US I believe right now so yeah that's it that's all I've got so thank you very much and until next time, just remember the Flynn lives. <laughs>